friends, welcome back to Moon Magic Spirit. My name is Meg and today I'm showing you a tarot deck that is perfect for beginners. If you're not familiar with me, welcome. My name is Meg. Everything that you need to know is listed in the description box, including a link to my website if you're interested in booking a tarot reading with me. And on this channel, we talk about all kinds of mystical arts. Luna makes the occasional appearance. Um, and yeah, we have a lot of fun over here. So if you are a beginner when it comes to tarot, it's a lot. It can be really overwhelming. Um, it's 78 cards, and if you choose to read reversals, it's double that. So it's a lot to take in. It's overwhelming. I'll have some uh, websites listed down below and resources that I found really helpful when first learning tarot. I also have a binder of information. <laughs> that I created, but this deck is super, super useful and I'm gonna go over why. So I found this on Etsy at the shop, Rowan and Elm. I'll have them linked down below. And this is described as beginner tarot, keyword antique deck, glossy edition, 78 cards, keyword zodiac tarot correspondence. Tarot is a lot, as I said, and it's not that it's like a cheat sheet. It's just some cards you're gonna become really familiar with because you're gonna pull them all the time. And there's gonna be other cards that you don't really pull that often. So this guide is going to be perfect for you. But first of all, it comes in a little pouch, which I love. As much as I love the boxes that decks come in, they're a little bit clunky, they take up space. So I'm glad that this came in a pouch. And can we also take a moment to appreciate the back design on this card. How stunning is this? I think it's super cool that it's just a mix of suns, moons, clouds, stars, and we have a compass on the back as well. So when we go ahead and look at the cards up close, it is like that antique tea stained finish on here. So I kind of like that. It gives it a vintage vibe. And here we can really see what the cards look like. It has the original artwork of the Rider, Rider Wade Smith deck. It has the name of the card, the corresponding number, and then here we have the main keywords for the card. We have like a little quote that describes and has the essence of the card. We have more keywords at the bottom of the card. And then if it's a reversal, you have the reverse meaning right here too and my thing is is that i love reading reversals personally when it comes to tarot i feel like it adds so much more depth and like layer to my readings and that's just me personally because there are some people that can say that they have enough depth and layer to their readings without reading the reversals so it's all personal preference whatever feels best to you whatever you feel guided towards go ahead and do, but I do appreciate that there are reversals on here. So I absolutely love that. We also, again, have the name of the card here on the sign, on the side, and then we have the element. And then we have, it's either gonna be the planetary ruler or the astrological ruler. So for the fool, he's ruled by Uranus, for example. And here we have the emperor who is ruled by Aries, as you can see on the side of the card. So that is the difference. It will tell you whether it's a planet ruled or astrological ruled. So, and then of course, each planet is also ruled by a the zodiac signs as well. Personally, for me, what I'm really going to love about this deck is the element listed because with the major arcana, I am not familiar with the element and all the 22 cards and also knowing whether it's ruled more so by a planet or by a zodiac sign. So that's what I'm really looking forward to, you know, strengthening my studies for this. And what I also like about this because, you know, a lot of us don't normally read Roman numerals. So here, for example, we have have Roman numeral five, but we also have five listed on the side of the card. So it makes it a little bit easier to go through. What I really like about this is for the suit of cups, we all know that the suit of cups is a water element and that it represents the different water signs. So for the ace, it just says water, but as you go through, it actually lumps each card to a specific water sign. So card two is cancer, card three is cancer, card four is cancer, and then five we have Scorpio, six we have Scorpio, 
seven we have Scorpio, eight we have Pisces, nine we have Pisces, and ten we have Pisces. And then when it gets to the court cards, so here we have the Page of Cups. And on the sign, it just says Earth, Page of Water, Cups. Because each court sign has an element assigned to it as well. So when it comes to the pages, they are the earth element, but it is still the page of cups, so it's the water. And then for night, it says that night is an air element in cups, water. The queen is water element, cups, water. And then lastly for king, it says fire king of water cups. So that's really interesting. I've been studying tarot for a while and I've never really heard the um, suits being broken down into each subcategory. Like for example, two through, what is it? Four representing Cancer and then five through seven representing Scorpio and then eight through 10 representing uh, Pisces or whatever it was. And I also wasn't familiar with the different court cards representing elements, like all the pages are earth, all the knights are air, all the kings are fire and all the queens are water. So that's awesome. I learned something new from this deck, even though I've been reading for a while. So super, super cool. I think that this deck is going to be very beneficial. I also am excited to share this um, on social media posts because I feel like it's a good way to have people feel included and like I'm just staring at this card. What does it really mean? So they can also see some of the keywords and then when you have your explanation on social media like Instagram, for example, if you do a card of the day, they can see what the keywords are and then you can do a little bit more drawn out of an explanation. The only thing I would say is to be careful with the reversals. I haven't gone through every single card so I can't speak for the entire deck, just kind of what I glanced through because I haven't really worked with this yet. Um, when you're, if you're new and still going through these cards, still make sure that you're studying like all the different meanings and possibilities with the cards. Um, and for me, because as you go on to read tarot, you kind of develop what the cards mean for you in a reading. So for example, when we have the four of wands, right, it's like a celebration, like it's very outward. So for me personally, when the Four of Wands is upright, I see that as like a big public outward celebration, like you're really making it known. But when reversed, I can see this as like an internal celebration, like something that you're happy about internally. And that's kind of how I read a lot of the suit cards. Reversed is external versus internal or macro versus micro. So make sure that you're still studying up to learn like the diversity of it because reversed on this card, it says the Four of Wands is tension, turbulence, anxious, unprepared, hurried, and insincere which it can have those elements. But again, I personally like to assign the internal and external aspects to it. So like an internal celebration, a more intimate celebration is what the reverse four of wands can mean for me. So this is just a reminder to make sure that you're still looking up the meanings to the cards and studying them and not just like using this as a crutch because there's a lot more meaning you can get from the full card than like the five keywords that are listed. It's just really helpful if you are blanking on a card during a reading or you're not familiar with it. You just have the nice little essence of the card. So I will have this linked down below for you guys to check out. Again, be sure to check out my website down below, my social media. I'm always posting different content based on tarot and astrology and crystals most of the time some other little areas as well. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos before you head out. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite tips and tricks are for learning the tarot. I would love to hear from you. As always, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to hang out with me. I really appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone.